as something that can only be described as magical, a operation has in fact been added to CSGO. Operation X has been revealed to be Operation Broken Fang. So this is the first you're hearing of it. You've come to the right place because I have all the information you need to know about Operation Broken Fang and how to make the most profit off of it in this video. So. Let's get started. Also in the background, you're going to be seeing me getting shafted by CSGO with 300 stars. So hopefully if you failed on your free stars, you can see me getting shafted by 300 of them and feel a little bit better about yourself. All right, let's take a look at a sponsor and get started. The sponsor for today's video is vloot.io. They're a great site that takes absolutely no time at all to go enter a whole bunch of really cool CSGO giveaways and some general giveaways. It's absolutely a no-brainer. It's just free money. So make sure to go check them out with the link in the description below. All right. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're probably going to notice as a big difference from Operation Shattered Web is, of course, the new star economy. So basically, there's a new star economy in CSGO, which basically means you can use these stars to buy specific things rather than being able to just use the stars to progress through a battle pass. So basically, you can take your stars, four of them if you want, and spend them on a new collection from this operation, or you can also spend one star on some stickers or graffitis, probably not the graffitis, and you can also, of course, spend more stars on agents if you want to do something like that or you can spend two of your stars on a case. By the way, it's not actually dubbed a star economy, that's just what I'm calling it because I think it's a good way to kind of sum it all up. Basically, you can now buy specific stuff with your stars rather than just relying on whatever the battle pass automatically gives you. Now, obviously, there is going to be a little bit more of an individual benefit here, but there are still some cons to this. Basically, on an individual level, you'll be able to get a little bit more mileage out of each of your stars because you can buy whatever you basically want with them, which is a pretty cool thing. However, a lot of the cons come with the increase increased quantity that this is going to cause for the marketplace. Basically, now that people are able to spend a specific amount of stars on a specific thing, like the collections for example, that means that these collections can be ran up in their quantity pretty much as much as people want to pay for stars. So compared to the Operation Shattered Web where people have to kind of wait and time their stars for actually getting an operation drop, this time around people can front load all of their stars straight into one thing that they're looking to get, which means that the quantity is probably going to be higher. Obviously people aren't going to want to buy graffiti but people are going to want to buy stuff from collections and stuff like maybe the nicer agents or of course the stickers because all of those are going to have more value and look better to the average person. Also from what I'm able to tell the collection odds have not been adjusted so basically that means that every single time you got a collection roll during Shattered Web it's basically going to be the same odds that you have now for Operation Broken Fang. So let's lay it out and think about it. If people can buy as many stars as they want for the most part and they can spend it on specifically collections and they can buy the collections as as much as they want with no limits, and the collections are going to have the same rates as the Shattered Web collections did, what does that exactly mean? You guessed it, higher quantity. There's going to be higher quantity of these skins floating around, and that's just a simple fact. People are going to be buying into these collections more specifically, which means that there's going to be more of these items floating around. That's just natural. So, compared to Shattered Web, we're going to see a lot more quantity of these items in existence. However, these are still going to be very low odds, and they're still going to have to be a collection roll, which means that it's basically next to impossible to get something really good out of something like this. So, for the most part, there's actually a lot of good prospects here. For example, the Op Fade is now a pattern dependent skin compared to the Op Gungnir. So the Op Fade is still going to rely on having a really good fade percentage for a large portion of its value to actually be added, which means that a lot of the value from the Op Fade can just be derived from its pattern alone and doesn't have to just depend on being rare alone like the Gungnir did. Now keep in mind, the Op Fade is the first covert fade item in the game that is not a knife or a glove, which means that out of all of the guns in the game that have the fade skin, this is the only one that is covert and obviously the highest rarity one. Combine this factor with the fact that the skin is also going to be dependent on a pattern and you have a really good prospect here. Obviously an op fade with a super good pattern is going to add quite a large amount of value. Now if we compare other things that have really good fade percentages like the knives that are also covert, we can see that the fade percentage kind of depends on the knife itself and will affect the value quite a lot. 100% fades can go anywhere from 150 up to like 450 sometimes in terms of how much value they actually add. So with an op fade that has a really good fade percentage and it being the only covert gun, 
and it being from a collection where it already has such a high rarity to obtain, that means this can have a very high amount of value impacted by the pattern itself. On top of that, the op fade seems to be the big draw for a lot of people that are buying into the collection using their stars. So for all of these factors combined, what does this mean? Well, it means that the op fade is going to be a great item to hold on to. So to answer the big question, the op fade versus the op gung year, which one's going to be more expensive? The op fade is probably not going to reach anywhere near gung year prices just because of the collection rarity and the star economy. But I do think that the op fade itself is still going to hold a very high price. However, I do think it is going to dip into the hundreds range for a few reasons. First of all, the op fade only comes in minimal wear and factory new, which means that the trade-up inputs can actually be battle scarred and you can still get a pretty good wear op fade. This means that the trade-up inputs can be a lot less expensive and you can mess around with the floats on them pretty freely and still get a pretty good outcome op fade. This combined with the fact that people can front load all of their stars into that collection specifically means that the op fade is probably going to actually be in the hundreds for a period of time. Okay, so that was a lot of talk about the op fade, but that's because it's one of the biggest topics of this operation. So let's move into some of the better investments and some of the really cool looking skins. Also, if you're wondering what the best thing to buy with your stars is, I'm going to be giving you a bunch of options and a bunch of different reasons for those options. So that's going to be happening after we talk about some of these investments. Okay, so for starters, we're going to talk about the best time to buy into these investments. And that's probably going to follow very closely with the Shattered Web operation. So with the Shattered Web operation, the best time to buy was a couple days after the operation first released. This is because most most people were aware of the operation and were able to buy a lot of stars right off the bat, which caused them to pretty much have no money after buying all of these stars and flooding the market with a whole ton of skins that they didn't really want. If this operation is anything like Shattered Web, that means that the first week or so is going to be the best time to buy any of these items for the lowest prices, because that's when most people are going to be selling off all of their stuff from a big front-loaded star purchase that's going to basically bankrupt them for the rest of the operation. Now, of course, we do have the star economy rather than the battle pass that we had before which means that people can now front load and buy a lot more skins a lot sooner than they could with the Shattered Web operation, which means all of these people that are able to front load all their skins into the market are going to flood it even faster than Shattered Web did, which means that the lowest prices for this operation are probably going to be realized within the first two days or so, rather than the first week like it was for the Shattered Web operation. Now, of course, this is just an educated guess. I don't work for a time traveler. Obviously, I can't see what's actually going to happen in the future, and it is really hard to actually predict a market, but I do think based off of all the factors that we currently know, it's probably going to be the lowest prices within the next couple of days. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking that because quantity is going to be increased for items throughout the operation, that the prices are actually going to be lower throughout the operation rather than within the first couple of days. Now this isn't true for a few reasons. First of all, the main issue is that people are going to want to front load their stars, meaning that all of the stars that they get are going to really be at the beginning of the operation as they are able to buy them with look what they've saved up in preparation for this operation which means more of the skins are going to be on the market right away and flooded on the market right away. Also, later in on the operation, there's going to be an equalization between the demand of the market and the market prices itself. So basically, prices are going to depend on the demands and are going to be a lot more normal to what they're probably going to be after the operation as well. Basically, because more people are going to be aware of the operation to where the general player base of CSGO is aware, that means that the prices are going to equalize at a more normal level after the first couple of days and after people have gotten a better idea of what their skins are really actually worth. This is the same reason that the Desert Eagle Emerald Jormungandr was $8 when the operation first started, but then ended up going to about $7. $70 around the time that the operation got midway through. This is a perfect example of how the market equalizes around demand, and it's probably what's going to happen with this operation as well. Okay, so let's talk about some specific investment strategies. So with the Shadow Web operation, a big one was the blue skins, and that's actually one of the better performing ones, because the blue skins traded up into purples, and therefore were very desirable as trade-up inputs, and that made them very expensive on the after-operation market, which means that with this operation, we could see something similar. However, I would doubt that because the purple skins tend to be a bit more underwhelming than they were with the Operation Shattered Web. The Operation Shattered Web had probably the best purple skins out of any collection ever as a consistent whole, which meant that the blue skins were a lot more valuable. 
However, I don't think that's going to carry through here, and I think that a lot of the blue skins can even be considered better than some of the purple skins. What this means is the blue skins are probably going to be good pickups just because they look really nice and not just because they're used for trade-ups. And for the purple skins, I think that's actually going to shift the role of the blue skins over to the purple skins. So basically, the purple skins are going to be desirable for the fact that they're able to be traded up into pinks and not because they look nice on their own. There are a lot of nice pinks with this operation, and there aren't so many nice looking purples, which I think means that the pinks are going to be more desirable than the purples, and therefore the purples are going to be good trade-up materials. And as for the pinks, those also trade up into some of the nicest reds we've ever seen as well, like the Op Fade and the AK X-Ray, so I think that's also going to be a pretty good reason. I mean, these are operation skins, so you're pretty much going to see returns on everything, but if you're looking for big returns and you're looking for something similar to Shattered Web Operation returns, purples are probably going to be your best bet as they do have the draw of being trade-ups, which was the reason that the blues from the Shattered Web Operation did so well. So basically to sum it up, blue are good because they look nice, purples are good because they're good trade-up inputs, pinks are good because they're good trade-up inputs and because they look nice, and reds of course are really nice because they look nice. As for stickers, these were honestly pretty underwhelming, but I do think that the Battle Scarred Hollow is one to keep your eye on, and I do think that one's going to do pretty well. The Gold Snake Foil isn't too bad, but honestly I think the Battle Scarred Hollow is pretty much the best sticker that's available right now. Okay, now let's move on to alternate strategies and kind of wrap this up fast since there's not really too many to talk about. Basically the alternate strategies are going to be things that you can buy into that are going to make you good profits that aren't just traditional operation investments. So the first one is going to be of course AK Redlines. I mentioned this in my previous video about winter investments. The AK Redlines are great flips for winter because the demand skyrockets for them around Christmas time as they're one of the most affordable and nice looking AK skins and they're right in that $20 Steam gift card range which makes them a prime target for the Christmas time area. Which means that when this comes around this operation, the liquid AK Redlines are going to drop in price like crazy as people quick sell them, which means that they've dropped down to around $14.30. So right now is a great time to pick those up if you're planning to flip them in December, pretty much the lowest price you're going to see until then. Another great strategy is going to be purples from the Shutterweb operation. These are very volatile right now for a few reasons. They're going up because they're discontinued and no longer in these collections, and they're going down because people are selling them to buy newer operation skins. What this means is you can wait for them to decline, buy them on a low, and then wait for them to go up as they obviously will as they're discontinued, and sell them on a high. And the final alternate investing strategy is actually going to be operation items, it's just going to be stuff that people probably aren't going to buy into. For starters it's going to be the other two collections, not the one with the op fade in it, because these other two collections actually have a lot of decent skins in them that are probably not going to be bought as much just because everybody's going for that really nice op fade collection. And other than that, there's probably just going to be another big one with those random weird gold stickers that they released. I really don't know what's going on with these, but because people are probably not going to buy into these as much, they're probably going to hold nice prices as time goes on, as there's going to be lower quantity. Of course, they're also not as high demand, which means that the price isn't going to spike too much, but they're probably a nice little rare item to pick up for the very long term. Now as for agents, I honestly don't think agents are going to be a good pickup. Like I said with the previous operation, agents just don't have enough in-game impact to be really cool things that people want to buy into, and a lot of agents are even trading under the star margin, which we're going to talk about in a second here, so that's why I think agents aren't going to be all that great. However, some other people do think agents are going to be a better option, so maybe you want to listen to that and see what you think. Personally, I don't think agents are going to be all that great. Alright, so now another big question answered, the case itself. I think this case is actually going to see a $2 price point at some point in the future. I think it has the potential to, even though people can just buy it as much as they want, because a lot of people are really only buying it to open it at the moment, since it's a lot cheaper than opening other cases, as the case cost is essentially free if you have stars. And I think that's a big draw for people to just open the cases themselves and not really hold on to them. However, there probably are going to be people that are holding on to the cases, so that's something to keep in mind as well. I think that these are still going to be good buys and probably worth about $2 at some point in the future. Considering for 4 stars into a collection, you're most likely to get a gray worth about 3 cents. I think the cases are going to be a lot better buy because it's half the star cost and $2 as a value. However, rolling the collection wheel with your stars is still going to be a pretty good option just because you're going to be getting the highest demand stuff out of this operation other than anything else. So I do think that if you want 
the higher demand things, rolling the collection is probably going to be your best bet. And if you want more of the safer bet, that's probably going to be with cases. Now the final thing to talk about is going to be just the Operation Pass itself. This is always going to be a great buy, and with the Shutterweb Operation Pass, we also saw some pretty solid profits, and I think that's only going to continue as we go forward. Every single pass is pretty much going to be a profitable thing to buy into, so if you want to buy a few of those and hold on to them, you're probably going to see some pretty good margins on those as time goes on. And finally, one more added thing to say, this is actually a star economy because there is also a star backing. Basically, all of the value of the items is backed by the stars themselves, basically the same way that gold-backed currency works in real life. So because stars and star value backs the value of a lot of these things, a lot of these values cannot drop below a certain point. So basically the cost of a star is going to make anything that you get with that star not be able to drop below the price of that star. So if you want to take that into mind, a lot of this stuff is going to follow the same kind of rule as the CSGO in-game store, where stuff cannot really go under the price of $1.07, because that's how much it costs to get it in-game in the store with tax. If you want to try and evaluate the values of certain skins based on how hard they are to get using a 4-star input and trying to kind of do all of that math, you can probably figure out a pretty good price point to buy at and some nice items to buy at, but that's pretty much just going to require you doing your own personal research into what you think is the best. And that's about all there is to say. There's going to be more videos on the operation coming soon. Just wanted to get this big guide out to kind of front load everything that I'm thinking about this operation, and that's going to be it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for all that came and watched the operation stream, and there's going to be more operation content coming soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't miss a single video on the operation to get all of your best investment updates for it. That being said, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Make sure to check out vloot.io, my Twitter, and my Discord server in the description below. And if you want to discuss that operation and its investment potential, see you all next time. Peace.